why do they watch us? I'm such a bitch to our audience and they still watch me while I'm on. I, is it like Stockholm syndrome? <laughs> I'm not good to you people. So uh, this week, uh, Mike has out, Mike and, and Catherine both kind of outdid themselves. They gave me so many, so many stories. We have stories from Mike. We have stories from Mike. We have stories from the audience. We have stories from Catherine. We have stories from all the hell over. I quit. <laughs> Aw, come on. Give him a chance. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so shall we do this? Let's do this. All right. Each week, Catherine goes out to the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, oh my, 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 my. Um, you know, the, the whole thinking thing through aspect of our culture seems to fail in so many ways. And this kind of is, is up your alley for the show you're going to be doing. I think that you'll want to remember this one. This is definitely going to be a tip for people. <laughs> so if, if you go in... All right. What's, what's the one thing you shouldn't do if you're planning to rob a place? Put it on Facebook? No. Rob that place? Mm, no. Call ahead? Like those freaking Connecticut bank robbers and tell them to have the money when you show up? Close. Very close. No, no, no. In this case, it's don't apply for a job at a place you're about to rob. Hey, that rhymed. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Um, Florida Man 33 robs gas station minutes after submitting a job application. Uh, please say Anthony Thomas applied to work at a Sitco gas station in Ocala, Florida. Of course, it's Florida. Florida! Everybody take a shot. And then slipped $130 into his pat pocket when the cashier's back was turned. Please say uh, he stole 130 minutes after asking for work. Uh, the 33-year-old had only just handed over his full name and address to bosses when he spotted the register had been left open. Cashier's back was turned. Surveillance footage appears to show him reaching over, lifting out wads of notes he then hid in his clothes. In the immortal words of Antoine Dodson, we gonna find you. Yeah, you that, are so dumb. There he is you right there. So yep, there he is right there, just reaching into the... Okay, and, and his statement on... Damn the camera's there! His statement on the matter. This is a quote. This is a correct quote, an, an exact quote. I didn't rob no store. You're on camera, sir. Well, it is a double negative. So I would say that statement is accurate. Sure, if I, grammatically painful. I would say that one time. What the hell? That's, that's just. That's not a great cover. <laughs> like, first of all, you don't really need a cover. No, you don't. Station. Like, there's not like a bouncer. You don't need a cover story to get in. Right. To rob the place. Right. You can just go in and rob it. But if you did need a cover story, one involving giving them all of your personal information, not the way to go. Not the way to go, no. Like, <laughs> go with a pair of coveralls and a couple of paint cans. Maybe, maybe, you know. Or, you you know, if you want to get really daring, pull a Tom Cruise, get the whole string, go in through the, through the ceiling bit. Yeah, you know, you know. Put a little panache into it. Anything that doesn't involve giving them all of your personal information. <laughs> so you think you got the job? You know, I have a feeling no. Uh, hmm. But it sounds like this was more a crime of opportunity. Like, you went and applied for the job and then saw the guy turn his back and left the money and just decided to grab it. 
which would seem to suggest that this wasn't a planned robbery at least, but that he's still an idiot. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, indeed, still an idiot. Speaking of idiots, um, we give doctors a lot of credit for being intelligent people and for knowing things and for, for we, we place a lot of trust in them. Have you ever had a doctor tell you something that just left you a little incredulous? You know, you were you were getting a diagnosis for something and the results were like. When my orthodontist snapped two of my teeth in half, he tried to tell me he just chipped a little enamel off the top when half of two bot my bottom two teeth. You didn't know that? These two guys are caps? I, did, I didn't know your orthodontist did it. Yeah, yeah. I had the orthodontist from Auschwitz. <laughs> and uh, he forced on brackets that were too small. So when he tried, you know how they take off braces, right? Yeah. They don't use a solvent or anything to break up the cement. They just pry the fuckers off. Mm. It's an extremely painful process. So when he tried to force them off, because he had forced them on, my two teeth snapped in half. And uh, while I was sitting there literally vibrating in pain, he tried to convince me that he just chipped a little enamel off the corner while I'm looking in a mirror, looking at half teeth. So I suppose I was a little incredulous there. Yeah. Well, this guy actually has you, has him beat, which is hard to believe. At least in diagnosis territory. Um, doctor gives ghetto booty diagnosis. A Mid-South woman has filed a complaint with the Tennessee Department of Health after she said the doctor she went to see for back pain gave her an insulting diagnosis. Quote, he said, I know what the problem is. It's ghetto booty said 55-year-old Terry Ragland, uh, what she, about she was told by uh, Dr. Timothy Swale in April. Um, Ragland said it was not the first time this doctor's office. She'd been there several times before, and her experiences were good. This is the first time she's seen Dr. Swale. He said, oh, this is, this is even better. He said, there's no cure for it. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Nobody knows where to start here. Oh my god. Your back pain is caused by your ghetto booty. Yeah. That's not a thing. That's, that's... Well, wow. it's not a It's a thing. Any rapper could tell you it's a thing, but it's not, it's not a disease. It's not a deformity of the human body, and it's not a chronic condition. It's not even as I understand it from the rap, because I want to sound as white as possible when I say that. It, it's not even a bad thing as I understand it. Uh, who's the spokesperson for this, for this disease? Is, is it Sir mix -a He's out there. Probably, yes. Yeah. She's Every day. Gonna see Dr. mix -a -lot. Yeah. Every First. day, women all across the country suffer from ghetto booty. But. But. Yes. They say there is no cure. <laughs> well, sir, if your thesis statement is, I think we can infer that his thesis statement is her back hurts because she has a big ass. Which is insulting. There are ways to say that. Like, my doctor told me I need to lose weight because it's putting extra pressure on my already terrible knees. And she said every pound of weight puts four pounds of pressure on your knees. So you need to lose a few pounds to take the pressure off your knees. Hmm. That's how you tell someone that. Like, well, you know, you're a little bit overweight. That's going to put extra pressure on your back. Yeah. You, you don't say, well, you got the ghetto booty. Yeah. Damn, that ass! That's not a good diagnosis. That's not That's... a medical term. Right, you know. And then to say there's no cure. If your thesis statement is she has back trouble because she has a big ass, well, there is a cure for that. It's called losing weight. I wonder if, if you just... Doctor, if you're a doctor, that's one of the few times or scenarios where you can tell someone that they need to lose weight and not get punched in the face. <sighs> and somehow... This guy still managed to fuck it up. 
Like you're a doctor, you've got a free pass to tell someone they need to be on a diet without getting punched in the face and you still manage to fuck it up. That takes effort. It's kind of, that, that's kind of magical, the, the, the links he went to. That's like a superpower. And this is... Bad one. He even took x-rays for the ghetto booty. Like you have truly snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. I wonder if the chart just said ass, 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 ass. You know? And now they're correcting me on proper diet diagnosis. Look, let's not have a Dr. Oz show here. <laughs> so, moving right along, don't make a tear angry. She. She has got the crown off with your head, so I'm saying. Um, have okay. Have you ever done something really nasty to an ex? No, I'm pretty soft-hearted, yeah. believe it or not. But um, I well, let's just say I might be related to someone who has <laughs> because I don't want to be on record as saying I know the things I know. Yeah, that that could potentially end up litigation but uh i think every time anyone's ever been in a relationship they, they've done something they haven't exactly been proud of with with in regards to the other person but i'm pretty sure the woman in our next story kind of went above and beyond on this one a uh, woman accused setting fire in bedroom as husband slept Oh, someone took their Florence in the machine much too seriously. <laughs> she wants to hit me back. That's not an instructional manual. Nope. Uh, Middlebury police have arrested a woman accused of setting fire to the bedroom while her husband was sleeping. The victim told police he went to bed after getting into an argument with his wife, Jill L. DeFusco. Oh my god, this is Connecticut! Oh, it's in your neck of the woods, yeah. Uh, no, oh. I'm so excited about the nutmeg state. They got into an argument over pizza, and he woke up to find his side of the bed on fire. Don't fuck with a woman's pizza. He jumped up, put the fire out, called police. Police said Jill DeFusco, 43, lit a greeting card on fire, which ignited a pair of shorts. Uh, DeFusco told police she set an anniversary card on fire and said it was, quote, symbolic of their marriage. After her husband threw jelly beans at her. All right, lady, I, I'm not going to argue whether he is or is not a dick. Are these people 12? But there is a big difference between chucking jelly beans at someone and lighting the thing they're sleeping on on fire. It, it, here's one, here's the... Whoa! Jelly bean burning. Now, if the jelly beans were on fire, I mean, uh, that's a different story. Over pizza. That's not a proportionate response. Over pizza. I want to hear more about that argument. <laughs> like, was it over what toppings to get on the pizza? Had she, had he eaten her pizza? Had she asked him what he wanted on his tombstone and he didn't take her seriously because clearly he should have. <laughs> what do you want on your tombstone? I burned alive. Tastes like burning. <laughs> My tombstone tastes like burning. <laughs> I, well, like, what are these people, 12? They got in a fight over pizza. He threw jelly beans at her, and she burned a card. You want to know the last time I burned pictures of an ex? When I was 18. Yeah, this is some crawling in my skin kind of shit going on there. Jesus. Now, because I'm a grown-up, I just throw those pictures away. Or delete them now. It's 21st century. Yeah. Shit's... But if I've printed ones, I just throw them away or I just delete them off my computer. There's no need to set things on fire as a grown up. Like, yeah, they do that on Friends. Friends but was 20 years ago. Actually, I think they actually, yeah, I know. 
I think, but in that episode, they actually accidentally set the apartment on fire anyway. So it was a parable, really. It, it was a warning there. And if you're going to burn, if you're going to symbolically burn the things from your ex, try to make sure that they're your ex already and that they're not present. And that's just, most, that's just, that's just good etiquette. Most importantly, don't burn the ex. Don't, well, he's not even an ex yet is the thing. I mean, I suppose it could be tempting sometimes, but that's a felony. That is a felony. Yeah. One is potentially immature catharsis. One is first degree murder. Which can be argued that a lot of first degree murder is immature catharsis, but... Over pizza and jelly beans. Yeah. What are you in for? Pizza and jelly beans. <laughs> That's not exactly going to get you in with with the prison crowd. Guess who's not running the cell block? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I ever saw that episode of Oz. <laughs> okay, well, um... It's not divorce, it's DiGiorno. <laughs> oh! Well done, Xterra, well done. That was very good. That was very good, yes. Um, so, moving along. Um, you know, some people already have an important job in their community. And I can understand where they may want to take on more roles... But this one kind of leaves me a little scratch in my head. Um, rabbi accused of impersonating cop. Some drivers in the suburbs north of New York City were startled when they saw a man waving his arms, honking his horn, and flashing a silver badge in an effort to get them to pull over in traffic. Even more surprising was the person suspected doing it, a respected rabbi. Rabbi Alfredo Borodowski had been arrested in one case and is being investigated at least two more in which authorities said the apparent reason for trying to pull people over was to rage at them for cutting him off or driving too slowly. Quote, that girl was driving too slow and I hate when people do this, the 49-year-old Borodowski uh, told investigators he was charged with impersonating police in June. Uh, he allegedly pulled his Camry alongside a woman's car, flashed a badge, and shouted, Police! Police! Pull over! You know what makes me sad about this? Hmm. In the Jewish faith, they don't believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ, so I can't even say the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I... Okay. If it was a priest, I'd be all set. Look, just because you work for God doesn't mean you're part of God's police department. He already has one. Michael, Gabriel, those guys already covered. Maybe he was R.I.P.D. R.I.P.D.? Yeah, you haven't seen the trailers for that movie? No. Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges play the cops that police the dead. R.I.P.D. It's a movie. I think it's based on a comic book. All right. Well, that joke fell flat. So it just it it's one of those. You won't. Just because you got God's back doesn't mean you're allowed to tell people shit. You're not in charge of shit. Hate to break it to you. Was this the Hebrew hammer? Do you remember that movie? I that remember that movie. movie. I remember the Hebrew Hammer. I remember that movie. And yet still. <laughs> I just, I. Uh, and of all things, to be pulling them over because they were driving too slow for him. I used to, I used to know a girl who had a bumper sticker that said, never drive faster than your angels can fly. I guess he did. So he must have some fast angels. There is, there is no God. Okay, there's no God squad. Hate to tell you, there, there's, there's no God squad. You know, I feel like God probably has bigger things to worry about than the traffic conditions on Main Street. 
All right, let's see. We've got a war over here in Uganda, and we have issues here in, in uh, the Middle East. And what? What? What do you want? This this chick cut in front of me. So yeah, we've got a war. Yeah, I'll get right the fuck on that. I'm sending my best man. <laughs> Could you potentially go to hell for that? I mean, it's certainly an abuse of authority. Doesn't seem like he hurt anybody. No, but that's just dick. You know, I mean, there are people out there impersonating cops to pull people over and carjack them. That's obviously much worse on your hierarchy of sins. But, you know, still, I mean... Impersonating a police officer is a crime, but it doesn't seem like he hurt anybody. It just kind of, it's not a good idea. No. And it's not going to work because police officers neither wear yarmulkes or drive Camrys. Which, yeah, that, that would be, at that point, I'd be like, which department like, are you with? Like your Camry? Kind of a giveaway. <laughs> I mean, I suppose a Jewish cop might wear a yarmulke, so that's probably not a fair assessment. But the Camry kind of giveaway. So speaking of other things that are not good ideas, um, you know how we have this theory about pizza and criminals? About how all this, this bullshit keeps well, happening? Cars. This cars one... Cars have an inevitable draw to pizza. This one... I think we're narrowing it down. It doesn't appear to be the cars so much as the douchebags. Well, if you're willing to burn a bed over pizza. Man crashes kids pizza party. Seattle police say they arrested a man who crashed an eight-year-old child's party, ate several pieces of pizza, and took two balloon animals. Parents told police they asked the 28-year-old man to leave after he joined the children's party at Green Lake on Wednesday evening. However, police said the shirtless, shoeless man refused and got into a, quote, very heated exchange with the families. In a release of the website, police say the man appeared to be the under the influence of, quote, a potent relaxant of some kind. How fucked up do you have to be? How much weed <laughs> do you have to have smoked? Wait, I... fine. You want some free pizza? Be a dick and steal some free pizza. I guess. Balloon animals? <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're there, you know... That's just like the rotten cherry on the dick Sunday. <laughs> That's new, the new from Baskin. That's oh. the scooge whipped cream all over your dick Sunday. New from from Baskin Robbins, the the <laughs> dick Sunday. Well, you know, last week we did the eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. I Sunday. Just and what I what kills me is that he got into an argument over this. What's your position at this point? Yeah, what is your argument exactly? Hey, you, my pizza. No, this is a birthday party and you're not. My pizza! Animal balloon pizza. I have no shoes. I mean, did, at least, did he at least leave them his hacky sack as payment? Oh... Yeah, I, I don't I don't think he's gonna be winning the debate trophy with this one. Just a hunch. Well, I mean, if he could make a compelling case, then he certainly would. Because if you can take shit and spin it into Egyptian cotton the way you would have to. <laughs> the balloon animals, yeah, that that kills me. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> that eight-year-old is just traumatized by this shit. I don't know, eight-year-olds are pretty savvy these days. That eight-year-old is probably just like, what a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Took my balloon animals, motherfucker ate my pizza. 
like, honestly, this guy's probably lucky he didn't get the shit kicked out of him by eight-year-olds. Because... They're mean. I have an almost eight-year-old niece, and I have an eight-year-old nephew, and I'm here to tell you, you do not fuck with eight-year-olds. Especially eight-year-olds. Maybe business. And their pizza parties. Seriously. Because that's... Eight-year-olds don't come to fuck around. So he's probably lucky that he didn't get the shit kicked out of him by a bunch of eight-year-olds. Speaking of... And cake. Speaking of fucking around, the last... The guy in our last story, I'm kind of impressed. It's awful, it's horrible, and yet there is still some manner of skill here. I kind of want to know how he pulled this off, because... Not, so to speak. Um... Not to coin a phrase. You remember that guy who was playing the bagpipe and riding the unicycle? Yes. He's got competition. Clark Duncan McElfrish allegedly masturbates while riding bicycle. Wow. <laughs> I know. That was my... Ex oh, in the first line, who wrote this shit? The first line of the story, different strokes for different spokes. That's not even a good one. That's, uh, that's kind of, you know, have you ever heard of the, uh, Tenga egg? No. It's a disposable masturbation sleeve device. Okay. You won't elaborate, but it's shaped like an egg. And they're, they're, it has different textures on the inside. This is going to go to a weird place. But anyway, their slogan is different strokes for different yolks because it's an egg shape. Yeah. So that reminded me of that, obviously. Clark and Duncan. The <laughs> were launched. I know, I know. Clark Duncan McElfresh, 51, was arrested in Palo Alto, California on the 4th of July for allegedly masturbating while riding a bicycle near Seal Park. Uh, a couple. The name. <laughs> Clark Duncan McElfresh. Couple, like, that's straight out of fucking Highlander. Couple called police around 739 to report that the man was jerking his chain while riding a bike. Oh, God. This... Really? The couple had their two kids, both under age five, with them, but they didn't see the alleged self-pleasuring cyclist. Police tracked him down, who they said... McElfresh, who they said matched the couple's description of the man. He was charged with indecent exposure. How... Did we do the story about the bus driver who was jerking off while driving the bus? Maybe. It's so hard to I remember. I remember if we did that last week or not, because there was a bus driver who masturbated to completion. Someone took video on their phone, and it went online. And, like, on the video, he's seen cleaning up after. Well, that... Okay, that's one that he's got cruise control, though. And, you know, he, he, can, he can do it with... He doesn't need to balance the bus. Yeah, that's true. So this guy was able to... Well, how many times in your childhood did you go, look, ma, no hands? Not like that. My boyfriend drives his car with his knees all the time and plays with his phone. <laughs> what, if I'm not in the car, maybe it's not his phone. I don't know. Well, in this I case... Ask these questions. Did you just... Tom, I had no part of this. That's all on her. I'm just saying. It's all on her. <laughs> no, but it's 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 keeping it's that poor man puts up with. This was look ma one hand. Okay, Dark Phoenix Mishima. He's got the shiniest meat bicycle. Nice. Nice. But now the <sighs> question is, did he have that queen song playing? That would have been perfect, wouldn't it? I like to ride, like, because clearly he likes to ride his bicycle. Yeah, a lot. He really, he really likes to ride his bicycle. I'm trying to get you a link for one more story, but fucking Firefox has given me the beach ball. What else happened? There was, I'll see if I can get this to work, because we need to... It's the link you sent me, unfortunately. It won't load. And it's fucking up my whole program. 
I'm sorry. Please hold. Here, you know what we'll do? We'll do this. Wait, wait, wait. No, we won't have to. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Look, Ma, no dignity. Oh, that's, that's, that was a good one. The question is, was he wearing a Darth Vader mask? Because the guy who rides the uni unicycle and plays the bagpipes wears a Darth Ma Vader mask, doesn't he? Yeah, it's just unfortunate. They can't, they don't let you put that on YouTube. Yeah. Blurred lines they let you put on YouTube. But masturbating while riding a bike, they don't let you put that on YouTube. Where are the standards? I okay. Know. So here, I'm giving you... All right, let's see. I give you link. We apparently have a bonus here. What the hell? Gentlemen, I hope you've all relieved yourselves already. Man was rushed to a hospital after a snake bit his penis while he was relieving himself in a toilet. According to hospital officials in Israel, the man 35, North Israel, was bitten on Friday after the snake suddenly appeared from inside the toilet. That is not a phrase you ever <laughs> want to hear. The snake suddenly appeared from inside the toilet. Surprise! Examination revealed the snake was not poisonous. Man told Mercy Works happened after he went to the bathroom to relieve himself, suddenly felt a strong burning sensation in his penis. Which is never a good phrase. Never! I... <laughs> this is a thing that happened to a guy. Look before you leap, gents. And women! I mean, this is actually worse because, we, like, we have to sit down all the time. You guys get to stand half the time, so... The it's scarier for us. The snake appeared... The snake suddenly appeared from inside the toilet. Suddenly is not a... That just... So, I, I guess the first thing we learned... Seymour is biting your penis... That's the first thing we learned tonight is always look, be sure before you start unzipping things, because there might suddenly be a snake in your toilet. That's not one of those things that should be a suddenly. That should never be a suddenly. It just seems like all the ingredients of porn... Arranged in the wrong order. <laughs> like you've got the mouth on the penis. Oh. The penis, you've got the snake. Mm. But it's all wrong. It all got jumbled somehow. I think that also that also works with the bicycle story. Yeah. Some people just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Do it. I mean, I don't think this guy's goal was to get bit on the dick by a snake while on the toilet. I don't think that would be most guys. What is it with Tara and dick damage? Is that a thing? I guess I don't. I really am not a dick damager. So I, I don't really know how to prove that. You'll have to take my word for it. So just because you can, I'm trying to wrap up and this just... Got a snake on a dick. Just because... I, I am tired of these motherfucking snakes in my motherfucking toilet. Knew that was coming. Knew it was coming. Had to be done. So, yeah, just because you can masturbate while ri ri riding a bicycle doesn't mean you should. I mean, it doesn't mean you shouldn't. You just shouldn't in public. Yeah, save, save that shit for pay-per-view. Or, you know, your backyard or something. 
We learned this week that um, if you do intend to commit a crime, don't hit, make the cops work for it. Don't give them all the evidence in advance. Yeah. They're paid to do a job with our tax money. Let them earn that shit. And, you know, if you're looking for a job, maybe don't steal from them while you're applying for the job. Crime don't pay. At least not on the books. Yeah. We learned that there's no cure for ghetto booty. It's, it's a, a tragic, tragic situation. Chronic condition. There is no cure. We should organize a telephone. <laughs> Won't you help? There is no cure for ghetto booty. <laughs> we have our title. Thousands of women are suffering for get from ghetto booty, and they need for help. We have our title. Here to tell you more, Sir McSwan. <laughs> we learned that... The best, don't go to bed angry and don't set the bed on fire. Yeah. Kiss with a fist, not an instructional manual. Good song, though. I like that. Good one. song. Not a not instructional not manual. Not to be taken literally. Queen's Bicycle. Good song. Not to be taken literally. Don't take it to that place. We learn just because you work for God doesn't mean you have any real authority. Not over traffic, anyway. Not over traffic, yeah. You you know what? You, you've got the whole thing about keeping kosher. That's yours. you got the whole thing about the Torah. That's yours. you got the whole thing about the circumcision. That's yours. Traffic is not your department. No. Someone else has got that, not you. I mean, if it's one of your... I don't know what they call it. It's not parishioners in a Jewish faith. Um, you know, but if it's one of your flock and they're behind the wheel with a with a meat and cheese sandwich and you know they're supposed to keep kosher, that's your There authority. you go. You can jump on that one. But if they just run a red light not or yours. just don't like their driving. Um, not yours. Yeah, that's really not your place. Not yours. And finally, we learned tonight, yes... Someone is enough of an asshole to still steal pizza from a kid. It's not exactly candy from a baby, but he did take balloon animals, too. Yeah. Who steals a balloon animal? <laughs> Maybe he just never learned to make one himself. I never learned to make one myself. I'm not stealing one from some stranger's birthday party. He always wanted that poodle thing, but he could never figure out how. It's going to deflate in like a fucking day. It's his dream, man. At least steal one of the giant pixie sticks. That's going to be good for like a week. <laughs>